I'm back. Got a fucking whole ass shop here now. I haven't been on the tubes in a hot minute. Well, let's get started. Well, where does one start? <clears throat> so, first off, got the big green monster I'm sure many recognize back here. So, let's start with what happened to me. Why would one go from working on big, heavy cat equipment to working on cars? That seems backwards, doesn't it? Yeah, in some ways it does. But what I realized back about a year ago was I needed to be out on my own. I wanted the freedom of working for myself. And like everyone else, I suppose it was probably in the back of my mind all along, you know, through my entire career, that maybe someday I would own my own business. So, as many of you that have followed along, either on YouTube or any of my other social media, you've probably put together that I worked for a Caterpillar dealership on heavy equipment for uh, quite some time. And then from there, uh, I also worked on the side in an automotive shop. Uh, that takes us up to about May uh, of 2021. At which point I decided more or less now or never. I wasn't really in a particular position or uh, had a lot of time to plan or save or do any of the things one might think you might need to do in order to start a business. I just said, fuck it, let's go for it. I had about two or three thousand dollars and obviously my intention was to find a building as soon as possible, but without a ton of uh, startup capital, I started out of my garage. I had a few small jobs right off the bat that I brought in. Um, and then with that money, I started buying some essential shop tools and equipment. Within about uh, two or three weeks from that point, uh, during that time, I was making calls with everybody I could possibly think of or knew of that might have access to a building or know somebody who did. Um, and that led me to actually getting an opportunity to share a building, kind of a dumpy building, but it had vehicle lifts, tire equipment, some other stuff that I needed. And I got into that actually rent free. So it was a really good opportunity and I took advantage of that. And I was in that building for two or three months. This is the front of the shop storage racking. This is just engines, uh, engines and transmissions. All these vans are all medical transport uh, taxi vans. Uh, the guy who also rents this building he does uh, this medical transport uh, taxi service. Before we go inside, uh, the plan is to hang a banner out here on the side of the building. This is a lot of junk back here. We go through a lot of tires on the taxi van, so that's kind of what's going on back here. And then he just has some of his stuff back here. A pretty big open lot, a couple acres here. So, come inside. This is where any customers would come in. I kind of have some office space back here in front of this window. Uh, underneath here, uh, parts drop table. This office uh, is actually used for um, the taxi drivers and all that stuff. Kind of get an idea of what the space looks like. We have obviously the tire balancer and the tire changer. Air compressor, big air compressor back in that corner. Obviously, we have a welder, transmission jack, an engine sitting back there, a torch. This is my box uh, for here at the shop I have set up. Uh, we have the press, engine lift, and... So what I could have never anticipated from taking on that opportunity, which I didn't, you know, think of much at a time other than just a dumpy building to get started in, was actually the relationships that it brought about... Uh, with some people that have a lot of pull in this industry. Um, and the advantage of that was, you know, linking up with opportunities such as the current building that I'm in, um, which was a big jump for me financially, commitment wise and all that stuff. Um, because at the point where I found this building and got into it, I was only in business for about three, maybe three and a half months at that point. Let's also not forget that during all of this, I'm still working full time for the cat dealer. Uh, second shift and I actually did that right up until about a month ago so for the first eight or nine months of business I 
was working full time as well as putting in even more hours than my full time hours, getting my own business started and uh, operating. it. So to rewind uh, just a little bit from today, uh, back to about August, uh, I signed the lease for this building, made the jump, moved in here. Um, obviously I had to replace the lifts, the tire equipment, all the equipment that I was able to use in the first building that I had the opportunity of using, um, more or less for free. And so not only am I now signing a lease that I'm committed to financially, but also I have to be able to buy all of this equipment and some of the more expensive equipment required to run an automotive shop. One might wonder, well, how did you afford all this? Or, you know, did you go get an SBA loan or... You know, what's the, the financial story, so to speak? Well, I didn't. Um, it's more or less been grown organically. And um, we just bought as we could afford. Um, and at the same time that all this is going on, we're also building a customer base. So uh, I guess it'd be an understatement to say this is all a very stressful process, but I wanted to do it this way. You know, keeping my full-time job and growing as, you know, the customers were there because I didn't want to get into a situation that I didn't know anything about, you know, with big debts and, you know, not necessarily having a customer base. I wasn't buying a business. You know, I was building it all from the ground up. And so this was the best way to do it without drawing income off the business and making sure that we get fully set up before I came in here and became a liability in a sense, in a financial sense, um, you know, of the business. I would have to credit when I started the business, I guess, for the rapid growth and I guess so-called um, fi quick financial success. I mean, we're definitely not successful, but um, to get to where we are now so quickly uh, to when we started the company, because we started like June 1st, that's when the official start date of the company was, that's when it was filed. And that's right about when AC season starts. And it was one of the first pieces of equipment I bought was an AC machine because AC is super lucrative and, um, you know, it's simple work. So I started doing that right off the bat and made a ton of money up front. I mean, for a startup business in the first three months of being in business. And so that really helped us move forward quickly. But by no means did we have, uh, you know, a customer base to speak of, um, before we signed a lease and moved into this current building. That definitely makes for a stressful situation when you're three months into business, really don't have much of a customer base and you sign a lease committing to, um, you know, overall, not just rent. I mean, everything that goes into having a building of your own, um, you know, keeping the doors open, utilities, electric, all of that stuff. You know, you go from basically $500 a month or whatever in overhead um, to, you know, multi-thousands, um, you know, with no change, really. I mean, obviously, there was change in the first three months. We don't, we were taking in more work, but three months is basically nothing in the grand scheme of, you know, doing work. You don't know what the next month or the next week is going to look like. And if I'm being honest, that really hasn't ever changed for me. Um, you know, this thought in the back of my head, like, what's next week going to look like? We're eight or nine months into the business here, and I still catch myself thinking that, like, you know, I mean, what's next week going to look like? Or we only have a few small things scheduled. But what I have started to realize over time is like, no matter how often I think that, there's always new customers. They keep coming back. We've got, you know, customers that are just full-time, bring everything into us. And um, that, I guess, is building more and more confidence in the business and what we're doing and the quality of work we're doing and, you know, how our customers trust us and feel about us. So you might ask, well, how do you get customers so quickly into a brand new business? Well, it wasn't even a question for me. And I guess I knew this from experience working in the previous automotive shop that Facebook is an extremely um, powerful place to gain customers from. And uh, I guess it's easy too from a marketing standpoint because there's not necessarily a target demographic or at least it's so wide that it's easy to hit because Everybody between the ages of 18 and 65, more or less, has a vehicle, and that is our target audience. So we don't have to narrow that down or get too thin with it, and um, right off the bat, we started marketing, you know, just a couple hundred bucks a month, a few hundred bucks a month on Facebook ads. We'd run a couple ads a month, and 
we saw them immediately and even up to, until this day pay dividends. And so we will we'll continue doing that. And at our previous location, um, you know, 98% of our work came from Facebook. Um, we were kind of out of town a little bit and now, you know, we're downtown in a downtown location. So, uh, we've got a lot more walk-ins. Google does some work for us and stuff like that as well, but we will still continue marketing to Facebook because still month after month, we see that pay off very, very quickly. So that leads us up until today. What are we going to do on this channel? What are we going to do moving forward? Well, I'm going to keep fixing cars. That's what I'm out here to do. Um, and I would like to bring back some content to YouTube. Uh, now that I'm out on my own, I don't you know, have any restrictions uh, as far as making content. So that's what I plan to do. Um, I'd like to hear what people want to see. I mean, there's different directions we can take this channel, you know, to a micro degree, uh, you know, all surrounding mechanics and automotive repair and, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, obviously we're going to take it in that direction to some degree. There's many uh, details and, you know, things we can get into as far as, you know, learn, I'm, you know, I'm, this is all a learning process for me as far as a new, being a new business owner and uh, getting into that, you know, this whole side of mechanics, running a business, you know, it's not just fixing vehicles. I spend probably about, I don't know, 50 or 60% of my time actually wrenching and the rest of the time it's doing administrative stuff and, you know, the not so much fun stuff. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize that getting into business, um, you know, as a mechanic, going from a mechanic to being a business owner, um, that that's the case, but it really is the case. And so there's lots of things to learn. And I mean, I'll take people along for the ride. I'm an open book as far as the stuff is concerned. Um, yeah. And to make this video not clickbait as the very last thing that we're going to say, um, we've so far gotten to the point where uh, the business is doing about 30000 uh, a month. And um, that is going to make this video not clickbait. And with all that said, go follow along on Instagram, ChristianW.Buyer, I believe. And uh, that's where you can follow along with, you know, the day-to-day -day life. And with that... Get after it.